Hi, um, thanks for the time today. I'm Chris Canora, I'm the Managing Director of Challenger Energy. We're uh, listed on the ASX and we've got a market cap of about 200 million. We have uh, two complementary gold projects in South America. Um, we have the Wally Loan Gold Project in Argentina, historical resource of uh, over 600,000 ounces of 13 and a half grams gold, which is open in all directions. And, uh, you know, look, with that one, it was locked up in a dispute between the two owners for 15 years. We came in as a circuit breaker about 18 months ago. So really, this um, uh, project has missed all modern exploration. In Ecuador, we're uh, in southern Ecuador. We're five kilometres along from strike from a 17 million ounce ore body, which is currently being permitted. We've got a regional scale footprint, which is 35 square k's. And the game changer for us as part of increasing that footprint uh, two months ago, we farmed into a 20 square K concession that's operated by small scale miners. They're um, producing about 10,000 ounces a year from narrow um, veins. We had a look at some of the 60 holes they drilled chasing feed for their mill that they've never really assayed. Um, we thought, you know, looks like there's a bulk gold system here. A couple of weeks ago, we got assays back for the first of those 60 holes that we put in, and it were in 134 metres at a gram with a higher grade core. So, you know, we are onto a world class bulk gold um, deposit in Ecuador as well. So, I'll talk about Argentina first. Um, firstly, on that historical resource, the average grade of all of the drill holes is about 10 grams gold equivalent. We think that resource, they smeared some of the high grade panel samples. So look, when we come out with a drill resource later this year, it will be near a 10 grams gold equivalent, which is still a, a very high grade. As I said, no modern exploration. We're in San Juan province, which is a tier one mining jurisdiction in Argentina. You've got Lundin Gold about to start construction. You've got uh, Fortescue in the province. We sit on granted mining leases. We're redoing the metallurgy now. The uh, previous metallurgy is 20 years old. It's fairly simple. You get 80% of the gold and silver out into a high grade gold and silver concentrate and is in concentrate stream. Sort of one comment there looking at the petrography we had done is I don't think they used to find enough grind. It's about 30 micron gold. So hopefully we'll do a lot better than that 80%. And you know, great infrastructure. We sit 200 metres from a sealed highway. We're a thousand metres elevation. You can work all year round. Uh, permanent water, which will cover our processing needs, four k's away and uh, your original power grid being built. I mean, having said that, unless uh, we get a very big deposit here, which ends up being more than 200,000 ounces a year, you'd run diesel. Uh, the uh, drilling results we've got on the right, I you think know, that sort of first result, six metres at almost 35 grams gold, that probably tells the story of this project. That was a twin of a Canadian hole that got um, four metres at four, and uh, the Canadians then worked out recovery is an issue here. If you don't get almost 100% core recovery, you wash out the sulphides. They retwin that hole about a year and a half later and got sort of six metres in the mid 30s as well. And really what we're drilling, doing is we're drilling a long strike underneath old Canadian holes that they thought had closed it off. And we're getting the typical intersections here, you know, six metres at 14, two metres at 20. We're um, midway through about an 80 hole program at the moment. We just put out the first batch of assay results uh, about a week ago. And, you know, again, great results that are pushing this thing along striking down deep. Eight metres at 17 grams gold, almost four metres at 12 grams gold equivalent. And this is what the ore body looks like in 3D. Um, this Magnata vein and Sanchez vein, they're the sort of key controlling structures. So they're big, basin wide, fairly vertical east west wrench bolts. The mineralisation has come up these faults uh, from below, probably an intrusive source, and you've got these east-west veins, and then where are these sort of east-west faults intersected the dipping limestone beds? It's then replaced out along the limestones with massive sulphide bodies. You can see the historical drilling there. You know, all of the old drilling was clustered under the shafts and added. She had a junior basically chasing exploration results. Um, you know, we've stepped at 50 metres down dip and long strike in the Magnata vein, 50 metres down dip and long strike at Centres and 100 metres down dip in the main Manto, and it really is open everywhere. You know, there's one hole drilled in the middle of these two bodies that got a metre at almost a gram gold and two grams silver. So, you know, what we're finding is these bodies are all joining. This, this is a very big system. And, you know, in terms of the, you know, the mineral assemblage, the very southern bit here centres, and that is the higher grade assemblage. So you sort of take what you've got on the north and wrap it over. And this is just the same area in 3D. The key takeaways here are the green, are the um, prospective structures. The red dots are where we've identified mineralisation in the field. And that uh, the yellow blobs there are the historical resource down to 125 metres for 600,000 ounces. So, you know, really uh, there's less than 10% of the footprint here in that two kilometre main zone has been drilled. Um, just to wrap up on Wally Lan, the photo there on the right gives you an idea. You can see the extent of that main two kilometres. 
uh, four and a half kilometres further north, just off our ground, there's another high grade gold silver deposit. Where that second question mark is, there's um, mineralisation outcrop of surface. So, you know, really we've got eight kilometres of virtually unexplored strike here. If this deposit was in Kalgoorlie, it'd have 2,000 drill holes down to 1,000 metres and we'd know how big it is. So, in terms of, you know, pending news flow, um, the next 12 months is all going to be about drilling, increasing the resource, metallurgy, and then once we've got critical mass, we'll do some sort of you know, economic studies. But uh, you'll see network in another month. You'll see continued batches of drilling results every two or three weeks. And then you'll see a re first resource and then a follow-up resource later on in the year. I'll um, go on to Ecuador now. And again, we sit sort of, you know, southern Ecuador a long strike from the 17 million ounce ore body. Those historical results there were drilled by Newmont 20 years ago. And, you know, you have a look, it's typical sort of big company work where they'd never gone to site. You know, two of those holes there ended in five grams gold mineralization, never followed up. The first four holes, three of them got, you know, over 100 metres at almost half a gram gold with visible chalk of pyrite, copper ore, logged all through the hole, never assayed the copper and never followed up. And, you know, what we did is we ran a, uh, a 3D MT survey just to see how deep the porphyry systems are. You know, when we found out the porphyry systems were sort of within 300 metres of surface, we shut it down and picked up um, all the ground around it. And you can see there, you know, that 150 metre discovery hole that I'll talk about shortly as well, which is the game changer for us. First, I'll just touch on you know, our traditional geophysics. Um, you can see there are three historical holes that are all over 100 metres, it's better than a percent copper equivalent. Um, that's a uh, chargeability. Uh, anomaly there so that's um, one IP line we've done and you can see that 24A those three holes have just tagged the very top of big chargeability anomaly you step down 300 meters and this thing is three times as wide three times as intense that 24A and 24B is a hundred million ton envelope and as part of tying in the geophysics we measured the IP response in the core some of the bits of that core go about two percent copper and it's a straight line relationship, higher chargeability response, higher um, grade, as you would expect. You're just simply seeing more sulphides. Uh, 24C, uh, that's another anomaly that's never been recognised. Outcrops that uh, doesn't outcrop the surface. When you go and map up uh, at the top there, you can see all of the fractures above that are stained blue and green with copper. That's another 100 million tonne envelope. Uh, I'll move on to sort of, you know, the concession we only picked up a couple of months ago. Now, the artisanals, they did some great work. They've done a regional soil geochemistry. You can see that A, B, C, D and E are traditional sort of, you know, gold and copper and soil anomalies. Where I've got the blue circle that just clips the main part of that undrilled soil anomaly, that's the main at it, where we've mapped about 300 metres of porphyry mineralisation. Um, you know, the top 40 metres that we've panel sampled there go about a gram and a half, which coincides with the main parts of the, um, ge of the geochemical anomaly. The red circle there, that's where that first hole that got 150 metres or 134 metres of a gram sits. And I suppose the obvious question is there, why would they drill there? There's no geophysical response. So I'll go in and we'll take a closer look at that. Um, what I'm showing here is the antimony and soil anomaly map. And the reason I'm showing that is um, this is a funny kind of system. It, it, you know, the core is all extremely chopped up. It looks like it's controlled by a regional sort of you know, structural trend. The gold is um, correlates really highly with antimony, arsenic, um, you know, bismuth and tellurium. So, you know, we've now obviously scrambled and looked at all of these historical cores on that trend. And, you know, what we see is there's a sort of four to 500 metre long 200 metre wide, defined down to four or 500 metres and open, you know, body of mineralisation. You know, it's a very big system. And really the focus over the next, you know, three months is getting all of those cores in now for assay. We've um, sent another seven in to be assayed in the last two weeks. And the aim here is at the end of, um, you know, another three or four months, perhaps to win a couple of holes, we can come out with, you know, a very large bulk gold resource. And in terms of follow-up, you can see down there along that major regional trend, you've got two sort of 750 metre long undrilled high antimony with twin of gold and soil anomalies there. And, you know, that's clearly structured and controlled. The creeks down there are, are dead flat. So, look, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time. You know, the aim for Challenger is really to, you know, use the cash flow we'll have out of Argentina to then fund a, a large bulk of operation in Ecuador. Um, I'm more than happy to take one-on-one -on -one meetings or, um, you know, pop through and send me an email and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. So thank you very much for your time.